they have to pull out all the stops. If they want to stay in the upper bracket, this is their last chance. Coaches are on point. They're at the helm. Players yep. are going to follow through with the plan. Here we go. Game number five. The last one in this best of five. There goes Araki Hoshi going on the play, batting out the glue and the carry. Blacklist takes out the 1-1. Remember in the previous game, RRQ switched sides, yep. and that seems to be very beneficial for them. They will not have the same opportunity this time, so that might just be a big factor. All the way in the beginning, though, we do see a glue and a carry, as well as a 1-1 one, one, and a joy. One side wants to get rid of these prio annoying heroes. The other wants to get rid of all this mobility, all this dive potential. So much is open right here, ladies and gents. RRQ... I think they can take, they want to take the E because it's their first pick. It's up to Blacklist International to ban it away. But at the same time, who do you ban away if you are RRQ? Well, again, you can ban out the Eve and then first pick the Kaja. True. You can also try to leave open uh, possibly the Fanny. I'm not sure if that's worth first picking in this situation. Uh, the Grok. Seemed to play a great role earlier, but no, 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 no. They're going this certain direction. They're going to take out the Eve, and then they'll play with their box in their own way. Yeah, I think Blacklist International doesn't want to see the Kaja right here. I think it's a no-brainer right now. Vin is super comfortable on this Kaja. If you notice, also fleeing time being built in earlier just now. That's hooked for days, but no, speaking about hooking, they take away the Franco instead. Kaja left open. I mean, Franco is a, also a signature pick from Vin. I think last season in our own MPL ID, he was able to show that he can completely take over a game if he's given someone with such utility. But the first pick is gonna be that Kaja, man. RRQ understands a bit, a big part of their success is how successful Vin was able to, to be able to pick off the members of Blacklist International. That suppression is very, very strong. Yep, MVP from game four was Vin on this Kaja. I mean, ride the momentum, ride the wave take it all the way through the last game of the series. For Blacklist though, what's left open? There's a lot on the board. There's the Farsa, there's the Benedetta, there's, um, what else? Well, Glue got banned out. I think there's a lot, like, I think it's right now, I think it's all about this first two picks. What is Blacklist International going to go for? That's the Benedetta going in, that's one checkbox marked. Yeah, we're seeing a Farsa going in as well, if you want to prioritize it early. Okay, wow. we're going to go in. Feels like the replay of Game 4. Reiterate, that's the key. That's what they're doing here. And then they're going to learn, again, best believe, the change up, the switch up might happen as soon as here, this third pick for Blacklist, or in the second phase during the banning. For RRQ, though, how do they close up their first phase? I think they require a bit more damage because now even with the divine judgment if you don't have any damage to follow up to try and secure that kill before the card control wears out it's gonna be a tough situation as well i think they need to try and lean into that aggression that is their signature style that we haven't seen in a long time actually and we've seen that even against blacklist it is a big problem i think it works out Definitely. looks like the pick is gonna Woo! be damage indeed and they're not gonna let blacklist Ban out the link. They're not going to wait. Yeah. They are going to be the aggressors, the initiators. They pick up the Yuzhong and the Ling. It's all about the positioning of Haji right there on that Farsa, right? Clay, uh, sorry, not Clay, R7 on that Yuzhong. It's definitely the Albert on that Ling. There's two items, or maybe not say two items, two utilities that they can use to kind of push away the Feather Airstrike. So, Right now, I think Blacklist International switching up the gears a little bit in, in terms of the execution. Let RRQ engage, we bite them back. And it looks like the game plan for Bon Chan here is to rely on their opponents, see how they're moving. But against RRQ Hoshi, it looks like it's the good old Ube. Because, again, they don't have to pull out something new. Instead of picking up the Estes in the slot, they go ahead and pick up the Plod for Oheb. I mean, Coach Bonchan here being very irritating, right? Just not giving us, <laughs> not giving us the confirmation on what he plans on doing, and that is why it's so difficult, right? The elusive mind of Coach Bonchan has just been shown in today's game. We don't really know what he's up to, and yet somehow he finds success. And as you mentioned, with the Claude picked up right here, they have a chance to shift this this draft into something more aggressive or even uh, tone it down and go for something a bit more reactive, right? Something that kites back better. Yeah, so what's missing for Aruki Hoshi that Blacklist can uh, clamp down on are mid laners or gold laners. And here's a hero that's both. They take out the Lunox. 
mean, you saw that for Blacklist, the fact that it yes. was, uh, the, the Lunox can be so flexible and so safe is definitely something oh, oh. they do not want to have because Haji relies on being able to go for those level 2 roams, those early game pickoffs to try and get the ball rolling. Wow. But quick bans right here, Fredrin as well as the Harith, they really know what they don't want to see. They don't want these flexible picks coming in from the side of our Q, right? Like, um, and another thing I also find interesting, RQ Hoshi, once the ban from the Frederick comes out, that's just a little bit personal. Wise was able to use the Frederick almost like three games in a row, yep. and it works pretty well, and there you go, the Lolita gets taken out by RRQ Hoshi. It's not even a choice of Barats anymore, right? They know that that's the only choice left, and I think Coach Arcadia, Coach Achel, they're accepting this, that, hey, hmm. he might pick up the Barat, so just ban out one of Oh My Venus's best heroes, take out the Lolita. So now, what's Blacklist to do? I think the Barat is a good idea here, but I got a feeling that there may be a Diggy coming out. A Diggy time journey would be very good because, first of all, you allow the Barat to basically use the out Dayton as welcome to swallow someone up, and then after that, you also deny the CC coming out from the Farsa so that she can stay in the Feather Asteroid just a little bit longer. Well, Point is, I think for RRQ, they need some kind of DPS. There's no way mm. they intend to take down a late game Barat with a Ling and a Yu Zong, right? Yeah, That's not a like bit this. of a, a bit of a tough endeavor. So some some kind of DPS, either physical or magical, needs to be secured here. Otherwise, they're prone to just falling to the same issue, right? Having a thick front line for Blacklist, and they, okay. they cannot penetrate. Oh, whoa. Okay, that's the Kadita, man. That's the shred, and that's the Kadita, and that is. Estes, once again for the side, all oh my Venus. Blacklist banning away the Lunox makes sense right now. And RRQ, I feel like this is a good draft against Blacklist as well. Yep, again, expect that Aegis on all my Venus to pop within the first 30 seconds. Because again, RRQ has to be super aggressive. And then from there, we'll see how much the gears have turned for Coach Bonchan and if they can change their fate because RRQ Yoshi are riding on momentum. I've seen that Blacklist can struggle against two pick-off dive heroes, but now with potentially three heroes, right, oh. that can be used to engage the fight, is that gonna be even more, uh, even more dangerous for Blacklist, or is it just too much from RRQ and they end up lacking something else in their composition? Arashi, Bakmas Nimta, listen, it's actually four, right? You count the Kaja too. You're right. So Kaja, Ling, Yudong, and Kadira. So Blacklist, when it comes to engagement, they're in trouble. Yep, everybody can die. But ladies and gentlemen, on to the land of dawn we go. Game five here in this best of five in the upper bracket. We'll throw it over to our Bahasa counterparts. But for y'all watching all over the world, welcome. This is RQ Hoshi versus Blacklist International. The last game in this to be honest, Grand Finals worthy series. Now off the bat, you already see adjustments being made. Blacklist understands the danger, and they have two purifies on their main carries yes. on top of the Aegis. Already a very good solution. Will that be enough though, knowing that there are four sources of crowd control from our queue? Another thing that I was like, oh, I've been me, have taken a lot of damage, but here comes Clay at the same time. Not enough damage from the side of our queue to kind of shut down the push. Uh, Blacklist International once again, oh my been popping the Aegis way too early. Thank now, you. talking about stats, right? Barats is the highest win rate with 100% in wow. five games. So, Blacklist has this major stat riding off of this game. I mean, it's a very strong hero in the right situations. And right now, it does seem like later on, when it comes to that macro gameplay as well, they're, they're going to be able to clear waves very fast with this composition. So, I think Blacklist is on to something right here. It's on the shoulders of RRQ to try and surprise them yet again. But at this point, you have to wonder, have they done too much already? Edward dashing all the way out just in safety right here. Gonna, Albert will get scouted out by Oh My Venus right here. 30 seconds on the clock. It's a race to level 4. Down bottom, you see that Wise has given uh, Skylar a little visit, helping out Oheb. And uh, again, this is an Avarice Claude. So every bit of basic attacks that yes. uh, Claude can get on anybody, actually, will help Oheb propel straight into that first two core items. Well, we're still in the early game and we can talk about the picks. We have to note that Clay can play a lot of aggressive heroes, but he is more well known for playing the mages. Oh, you have to wonder if that becomes a factor as the turtle is spawning, and it looks like the play is being initiated by our Q, but Blacklist ain't so far behind, trying to contest the control. Contesting the control is the name of the game right here, but Clay does have the level four as well. It's gonna be suppressed. Oh, it's getting denied by the ultimate. 
wide will also lose the title for now. It's going to be Arsenal. Ring and Rambo also looking for the break up of the black lace international. And say my wife will be the first to call. It's going to be Vin. That's going to be Vin. That's going to go Edward. Edward definitely trying to run away. Haji doesn't have the better airstrike. Can only use it now. Oh, that was just off timing for Blacklist. All of the tools that RQ needed just fell on their lap and they capitalized on a good situation, turned it great. Took the turtle, took some kills along the way. That was a bold move by Blacklist International trying to contest such an early fight against such a dangerous composition coming in from RRQ. Now, looking at the bottom lane, the island of the gold laners, at least in that disaster of an engagement for Blacklist, Ohem, you can still rely on him. You can still at least expect for him to do something, right? But when is that going to happen? How can you expect him to do that without the assistance of Haji, without the uh, assistance of Oh My Venus? Because, again, with Albert skyrocketing into the lead this early, three minutes in, even Oh, I feel like might not be too safe. This is the dangerous part for Blacklist right now. All three lanes, essentially, are in favor of RRQ. They have more lane control, lane pressure, but Vin okay. is being jumped on. Fede is right going in the same time, Vin looking a bit low. Oh, Hype will be the one that finishes the job. It's going to be one kill given over to the side of Blacklist. Oh, my Vin is right here, just healing up Haji, and they're back to fighting shape again. The road to recovery starts now. What do the items look like here for Blacklist? Blacklist. Oh, oh. oh Hype landing down the damage, but would not be able to be enough. But that could be the precursor. And here comes the actual main damage, and here comes the main party, oh. the blinker will be used, but Skyler Wave will be able to get on the top. But Blacklist, they're wasting a lot of time it's in the bottom lane. Gotta be maximum range, right? Tactical repositioning plus the flicker. That, that, that's gotta go on TikTok someday. That was smooth coming in from Skylar. He just slides out of that very dangerous situation. But right now, you can see that Clay is struggling, man. He wants to get these pickups, but this with the purifies, it. it's just a bit too difficult. They need to time this. They have to count the cooldown and ensure that they go in for the right target once the purifies are down. This Feather Airstrike is a little bit too early, right, guys? Yeah, it's a spec, and it's going to allow RQ Hoshi oh. to time it up. But this might be because they know, they see that Albert is still going for his purple. And this allows Y to do the same for his orange, and then they reset. So far, this is good because Blacklist, they didn't expect RQ Hoshi to pull so far. Low turtle resets. So resets, but look at the Blade of Despair being built oh. by Skylar on that Beatrix. That's going to be a lot of 1v1 kill potential, but Haji has a Clock of Destiny already scaling towards that mid, mid game. And look at that. Here game comes up. the Divine Judgment. Five would not be able to retreat the turtle. And number one turtle given over the side of our do once again. It is ours that we're going to take the form. And that is the problem that Blackness International couldn't solve. Just as quickly, I could have sworn the Barats would have survived, oh but no. no. Oh no. They have Woo. lethal intent. Oh, is in trouble. BMI oh. already pulled out. Vin doesn't really have the divine judgment for now. That could be a side relief, but Clay doesn't have the ultimate, so that is still a okay. Oh, but this time around, they may have actually all this extended just a little bit too much. The better airstrike zoning out the members of our RQ as well. Blacklist International, the big problem right now is that Kaja ultimate. It's just so difficult. There's a lot of sources of crowd control, and they can deal with that with the Purify. But if R7 or Alba just jumps on you, uh, that's damage, not crowd control. You have to go about. Wesker shot, Skylar walks away with one dot. Oh, that's, uh, again, it's, it's just unfortunate for Blacklist that the, their attempts at picking off, at countering the aggression on RRQ has not been paying off. And I don't know if it's bad luck or you can call it a good skill coming in because RRQ are doing very well avoiding these tough situations even though they do not have the defensive battle spell. At the world stage, there's no room for luck, all yes. right? Maybe a little, but it's more of because RRQ Hoshi are feeling it. They won game four, they have momentum on their side, and they have a relatively significant hey. Hey. Oh, right oh, going oh. in. Oh my goodness, just right in time, the ambulance. Right now, it's all about Vin, whether he can catch the right targets. Oof. Man, Din Hunter Sword has been completed for Ohab. He has a steel leg plate as well, so for now, he has some measure of defense against the physical damage, but that's only until Albert scales and gets his hands on him. At that point, the escape is going to be very difficult, and the fact that Skylar is on that Beatrix means that RRQ can slowly but surely siege down these turrets. How safely and how just cleanly RRQ Hoshi pressured that bottom lane, yeah. and that's permanent damage. Oheb now can't farm us safely down there, and all the more, this opens up this last turtle for our Kyoshi. It's 100% turtles for the King of Kings. The problem is, Vin does have the ultimate as well. Wise need to step on. He needs to try to eat that ultimate. There you go, Vin. Once again, the Wise Vin does not Whoa. shy! But Wise will be able to heal up just in time. Whoa. He's trying to look for the Vinka, but Retribution 
Blacklist International take away the turtle, and this could be the turnaround for Blacklist. R7 barely gets away with his life, but who'd have thought that Blacklist would have taken that turtle? Yeah. The mechanics, at least now, at least now, Wise is more confident that, hey, after a DJ, I'm okay. Yeah, the biggest problem right here is that Blacklist International, but hold on a second, slowing going on. Nothing's gonna happen for now, but let me continue my point. Wise needs to eat the ultimate of Finn. No one else on the side of the Blacklist could do anything at all. I think earlier, Wise was actually dragged by the Divine Judgment. Yes, But correct. unfortunately, the Breath of the Ocean from Clay does not land. And now, with Wise having the Radiant Armor, he is going to be a bit tanky until Clay has a bit more penetration to nuke him down. This is, might be the mid-game that Blacklist is looking for. Yep, eight minutes in, they shrank that Ajay. gold lead. Approaching three now, it's just uh, barely one. Oh, Heb jumps Whoa. in. Blazing Duet doesn't really stake. But there you go, Blacklist International managed to clear out the topside wave. What is going on around the map? It is the Fed Ezra going in. The West Coast shot will not be able to connect. It's a little bit too far. Blacklist International takes up topside. That's clean zoning from Haji right here, knowing that he has a lot of damage in his arsenal. The Lightning Truncheon is not complete just yet, oh, but even goodness. then, that needs to be respected by Skylar. He has the win of nature at this point. But, you know, there's still that magic damage threat coming in from Oh My Venus and Haji. That is what the main thing he has to be aware of in these big fights. And now, again, with the past minute or so being all about regaining real estate for Blacks International, yep. they can find better engages. This 1,000 gold lead for Arkeyoshi, yes, it's significant. Yes, it means something. But Blacks can put up a better fight because, again, of the aforementioned pull! I don't know whether this is a good idea coming up from Finn, but it's going to be wise. Get a knock on the door, but oh. getting healed by all my Venus! And then all of a sudden, RQ has lost their role. r a little bit too long. Clay coming in, trying to put some damage, but Blacklist International picked the one person. They threw no caution to the wind, and it resulted in Vin being taken down. Blacklist obliges, making a beeline straight for the Lord, and watch that green dot. Detna's welcome, still online. They waste no time at all, man. RRQ, they might play, try and contest here, play. but it might be too Go difficult. Ultimate. Unfortunately, Blacklist will be able to secure that Lord and RRQ. They just overestimate their damage, despite why it's just building full tank. They need to understand at what point uh, is their damage adequate to hear and pick off, especially the bigger members, especially with all my Venus on the sides. I feel like Blacklist call right here. Wise is the carrot. Vin hooks the carrot. But this carrot is a little bit too big for RRQ's mouth, and they got hurt. Their jaw dislocated, and this is exactly what happened. It worked for the first two times, but the fourth time, it doesn't work anymore. And Looking at the items here, 10 minutes in, Arash, talk to us. Exactly. I mean, right now, the blade armor has been completed for Wise as well. He is getting tankier and tankier. And so far, if you look at the items from RRQ, RRQ penetration is not, in, uh, is not in sight just yet. This might be a mistake, but here we go. Blacklist just sieging, taking away structures with the help of the Lord. Zoning away. That's the game name of the game from the side of Blacklist International. Well, hold on a second. It's a 1v1. Imagine if I going in for the side of Edward Albert. It will oh. be joking at all. The damage of the blade is going in. It's oh. going to be a fight. Oh. Underneath the turret, it is a trade. And all that time that Agent Zero bought for Blacklist, Ark Yohoshi are now reeling. They're looking at a map that's red, wondering where it all went wrong, because Blacklist Finn? now has a 1k oh. gold lead. Oh no, Vin, take a moment, but he misses there now. Here comes the Fed punishment coming up from Blacklist International. Better Ezra will be able to zone RQ away. Blacklist International is stabilized for now. Oh, they're gonna steal this purple away from Albert, who hasn't even respawned yet. We're looking at a Lord in a minute and a half. Arashi, what's going on? What can we expect in the next minute and a half? Because this Lord, this next one is gonna be significant. We can expect RRQ to try and get a pick up yet again, but of course, Blacklist, they adapt. You cannot expect the same thing to work again and again. Yeah. And right now, they have the solutions. A strong front line, they can tank most of the damage, sustain to back them up. And even if you want to go for the squishier members, like we mentioned, the Purify is there. So I think RRQ, they have to try and ration their crowd control. They cannot use it all at the same time, because if they do that, then it's easier for Blacklist to identify when they need to commit most of their resources. If they can spread it out a bit more, it's going to be a lot more difficult, and it goes back to that dirty, that messy fight that RRQ usually finds success in. Two big questions, Leo. Has Haji and Noah have used the Purifying? Second question, why isn't Vin catching all my Venus? 
feel like, again, he was trying to do that with the flicker. Unfortunately, he was just barely out of range. Maybe the pressure is getting to him. You never know. Oh. But Albert, once again, is going on a duel with Agent Zero. They traded one for one earlier, but man, it's still beneficial for Edward in this situation because Albert is level 15. Arashi tried to answer it, but I was going <laughs> to say, Jays, I don't have the answer. Blacklist does. At this point, they're in the driver's seat. They're camping here in this river bush, and I'm not sure if RQ knows. Man, RQ does have the map control, uh, burst control, in fact, but it needs to be an ultimate coming up on R7. You need to sacrifice that. It's going to be Albert oh, missing that what? purple buff once oh, again. It's did. going to be a replay of game number three. Oh, this, this Ling is thirsty. This Ling is hungry. He needs that purple. He needs that perp. It's, just, it's unreal, man. Why is this going to be it? steal so many resources, so many purples, but now this is the deciding moment. If Araka can no. flank around, this might be the opportunity they're looking for, but otherwise, Blacklist has a chance to completely use this neutral objective and force RRQ into an unfavorable oh fight. Oh my god. Do they know? Do they know? All right, that's it. They, they revealed it. That's yeah. it. Yep, RRQ Hoshi. So they're just trying their best to get a reset here, but can they find it? Lord, less than half health. Oh, here comes Vin. Here comes Vin as well. It's going to be the eight for this welcome. Will not be able to connect. Clay goes into the fire, but it's going to be knock up coming up inside RQ. The damage coming up. RQ doesn't really click. It's going to be Albert not in the way. And wise pick up Clay and Albert still standing in the back side. But all oh my business walks on in. He reveals the assassin. Skylar comes into Nibiru. Nibiru doesn't make anything at all. It's going to be all oh my business desperately trying to heal wise. But Blacklist International they traded for Clay. The MPL ID Grand Finals MVP fell and for no Better reason at all. Oh, it is going to be the suppression on top of that one. The punishment. Now it's going to be coming in for the uh, re engage But Albert trying to look for something to here. But the OM is creating so much trouble. And there's the win of nature activate at the same time. Oh. Albert going in, trying to play with the blades. But he gets zoned out by the members of Blacklist International. Oh, they baited out so much. But they instead traded out. And it's going to cost them. But at least, at least Blacklist walks oh. away with the Lord Skyler. Skyler had lethal and malicious intentions, but Blacklist says no. 2K ahead, Luminous Lord on their side. What does this mean for RQ Hoshi? It means that they are stuck on the defensive and they cannot go for those big flanks. I was about to say that Blacklist are just so patient. They play that fight so slow and RQ just weren't able to adjust. But afterwards, RQ were able to actually get something in exchange for that Lord. That's a small victory, but as you mentioned, Having the Lord on top of a very solid front-to-back composition means that now you can force RRQ to go to locations that you want them to be instead of RRQ being elusive, hiding in the bushes, surprising them with side planks. Yeah, now it's come to the point wherein even bush control isn't as important because you still have to think about those purifies. Now, Chase, Haji has his off of cooldown. Venus <laughs> has an Aegis. Oheb is waiting about 15 seconds from here. So this Lord push might actually be lethal. They could take an inhibitor, or better yet, they might even threaten a finish. RQ does have two petrifies left. It's all about RQ. How they play this out. The Panda Asteroid will be able to zoning out. That's the Lord defended by RRQ. Blacklist International focus on the mid lane instead. Nibiru's passion, wave clearing, that's all what our RQ can do for now. Locked in base. Luckily, Clay has solid wave clear. And again, you're still looking at Skylar despite the nerfs on Beatrix in the recent patch. They're doing okay. Arashi, what does the items look like? Oh, because the Agent oh, Zero. Oh my goodness, Vin out. misses the flicker ultimate. Allows Edward to slip on the way. That is very unfortunate. At this point in time, that flicker is a very valuable tool. And ooh, Blacklist oh. know that, tries to go for a big play. And the other problem here is Albert, but he's alone right now. He's alone right here, Edward. Oh, well, Albert needs to get on the way. There's a big dinosaur coming for your body as well. But it's going to be Blacklist International. Manager zone out of members of the side of RQ. Bottom lane is already gone. Luckily, his body was ready. Baby Alien <laughs> knows exactly what's going on. And he did not have to fall. I believe it's come to the point where in RQ knows they're playing with fire, knows that they have bombs in their fists and they're waiting to land that big haymaker. Question is, how do they find that angle? It's such a difficult situation because Blacklist have the, all their attention focused onto Vin, and it seems like RRQ, they're only relying on Vin to be the first initiate, whereas they actually have a lot of other tools they can yeah. use. They can go with Clay on the Kadita, they can go with R7 with a big flank and Petrify, but they're just not exploring that option, and it's making them seem just a bit too one-dimensional. And against a team like Blacklist, that just means that you are going to be so... 
I don't know, readable, so obvious, and you can see that several times here, Vin has flickered twice and has not landed a pickoff. Something tells me that's more a matter of conservation. The fact that Clay and R7 aren't oh being God. used as much to try and try to get a kill and get vision is because they're saving them, right? They're saving them, but so far, oh, not like this. This is a defensive Black Dragon form. Defensive Black Dragon form, Haji activated the Feather Airstrike already right off early. The Blacklist International know that Albert's all the way up top. Edward has full vision right here, but Blacklist International slowly collapsing once again. A purple buff gets denied away by our, uh, Blacklist International. Oh no, the baby alien's not gonna get his num nums. <laughs> this is a hard engage. <laughs> this is tough. When you're playing a Ling this way, I mean, I've heard this from stories. I don't play Ling myself, but uh. when it's like this and, and your opponents are just denying you your buff, oh, it's miserable. Yep, once again, ladies and gentlemen. Blacklist International setting up for this Lord Dance. It's about who has Lord Pit control. It's easy for now, it's gonna be Blacklist, and they're Bin. bursting down the Lord really, really fast. Bin makes the play! Bin doesn't connect onto anything right now. Oh, I'm going into place into it. It's gonna be all oh, my videos healing members of Blacklist International all the way to the tip top four. Oh, and we'll be punishing Vin! A Lord that's evolved plus Vin. The M-Series all-timer has been overloaded. Yes, he had momentum. Yes, he got MVP game four, but not against a lineup like this, not against Blacklist, who has figured out exactly what's going on. RRQ need to adapt, man. They have to try and do things differently. Blacklist has a read on how they want to operate. And now with 15 seconds left on Vin, the Lord is coming in, and high ground favors Blacklist International. Oh my has been god, used. this is a very tough and airstrike to defend while well, Elvin forced to use the Temple of the Blades just to get on there. Here comes the Bandit's Rage to try to clear off the members of the side of Blacklist International. Even orbiting the Nibiru expansion as well. The Lord will get chonged down, but Blacklist International, they do a lot of damage. They crack open the mid lane. That's permanent damage. That is a main artery taken away from RRQ Hoshi. Albert will not be able to explore the map as freely as he once has in this 19-minute bout. Now top lane inhibitor uh, is going to be next up on the dock. Here we go. Oh, head petrified, oh. but he's going to get purified. The counter battle spell. Here we go. R7 all the way in the back line. Trying to look forward, but oh my goodness, that's really trying to heal. But look at where Albert's going. He's looking for the angle, but will not be able to commit. Blacklist International, they stay a long time. There you go. If R7 can go in like that, you can see the, the cooldown on the purifiers for Haji and Oheb are nearly identical because they have to use it at the same time. They are trying to group together for the, the, the blessings of the Moon Goddess, and that is something that RRQ can take advantage of, but they need to just plan it out really, really well. And without that vision, without the control, it's just so difficult right now. And Albert has full inventory slots at this point, so he won't be scaling any longer. At this point, it's all about how how fast Blacklist can catch up to the 5k gold, uh, can use that 5k gold lead because RRQ, soon both teams are gonna be full inventory slots. Yep, we're about uh, a minute away from this Lord. And again, this is a Lord that scales yep. every minute from now on, 20 plus. The fact that we are looking at TikTok timers, when someone falls, best believe that is lethal. If a member of yours gets picked off, again, like Vin from the past 15, 18 minutes of this game, then no one comes back from that. So Arkyoshi has to be extra careful. Concealed play, no flicker committed by Vin, that's good. But this is where RRQ has realized that R7 needs to face check every single rush. The best part about Oh My Venus on this S is, right, your second skill allow for that vision, right, so that you don't really need to commit. You saw it already being used in the second, I think it was the first, uh, second or first Lord Dance, right? And it's really come to really good success. Now, we're about 15 seconds away right. from this Lord. You see Blacks International playing for purple buff um. domination. Bombs away from Skylar. And this could be Albert's last chance. Oh, he's so hungry. He wants it. Can he get it? The question is, but looking how RQ members come up. The Petrify coming up from our, that will, will be there, but purple buff will still be successfully secured by... Oheb, I think. Oheb. Yeah, as long as it's not on Albert, Blacklist is happy. No num no, <laughs> for the baby alien. It's so hard to play Ling this way. I can't stress that enough. Yep. And now Haji has a Holy Crystal. That's a lot of damage. One bolt from the Fed Airstrike is able to chunk Skylar yep. down to more than half HP. But look at that snipe coming in. Unfortunately, with an Estes in the composition, Blacklist will be having no issues at all. But look at that play. Oh, that is the suppression. The Vin needs to try to play. With the truck going in, here comes the play to the win. No fear for the Black the Avengers as well as BMI will be allowing all episodes. Albert will be able to pick up Haji for the time being. It's now Albert to the Dragon to pull down the damage to punish Blacklist International. Albert will be able to get out with the single dog big no help. Right now, Blacklist International have been the belt. They need to run away. Let's grab you boy from RRQ. 
but Lash oh, is no. international will be the one that gets punished. Three for three, Clay and Skyler versus Oheb and Edward. This is as scrappy as it gets. RRQ Hoshi pulls out one from deep within. The Sangraja still in this battle. It looks so good for them, and then it looks awful, <laughs> and then it looks so good again. And at the end of everything, it's a 3 for 3 equal trade. But of course, we let's take a down. look at that instant replay by TikTok. Look at that. Initially, the purifies has been used, and this is the opportunity. Look at Skylar just free hitting in the back. Unfortunately, he's unable to secure that kill. And Albert, he was stuck on the wall here, trying to just kite away from damage. And Edward is able to cut him down. And now Blacklist, once again, are the ones pressuring for this Lord. They have mobility advantage. Right now, the Lord. The Lord Downs, ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what Blacklist is really good at. Right, RQ, right Ooh. now, they have to try to figure this out. Okay, get chunked down all the way, go to HP. And now Blacklist, all of a sudden, they do have the Lord. It is all up to how RRQ plays with it. Albert is that link, could be able to fly all the way to the Lord Bay very quickly. But I think RRQ that lost the top side turret for now. It's going to be a rush, a mad rush to the Lord. Albert on the wall right here. They need to try to do something to defend. Trench Chief, the oh, Albert! Oh, the Lord! The baby alien secures it for RRQ Hoshi, but at the cost of Vin. Now it's a 4v5. No. Blacks International marching down mid lane. It is going to be a replay of the previous game, number three, once again. Even though RRQ was able to take down the Lord right now, it's going to be Blacklist International. They do have a lot of control. Oh. They do have a lot of damage, but they don't know welcome, welcoming RSM right into the top tum of the Rats. And now he will be punished. It is nice right now. It's going to get out of there. Oh my goodness, healing the members from the side of Blacklist International. 3B5 happening in the side of RRQ. The Relentless One has the favor turned they need to on do it. him they need to as do they it. take him down. They and need the to do it. Something as Blacklist International they stay in the armor brackets. Tennis Indoor Sinayan can't believe it. Neither could we. But Blacklist International send the Sangraja down into the lower bracket. A somber day in Tennis Indoor Sinayan. The audience is definitely disappointed. But of course, there is a victor and there is a loser in these tournaments. And unfortunately for RRQ, today, Blacklist International is the better team. Congratulations for moving on to the upper bracket. The M3 World Champions feel it. The agents in the stadium are the same. And boy, if you watch the last five minutes, you saw exactly how well RRQ Hoshi found their window. And even that Lord take by Baby Alien, by Albert, that was immaculate, but at the end of the day, messy as it was, Blacklist knew the way around the woods. It's just so crazy, right, ladies and gents? RRQ, this is not over for them. You better be sure they will come back with a vengeance. Blacklist International sending them down to the lower brackets. Not a good storyline for RRQ Hoshi. They will be bowing down to the Queens for now. We'll have to see, of course, RRQ improving so rapidly in such a short period of time. We can definitely expect them to come back even stronger from this defeat. But for now, we have to let Blacklist International have their moment. That's right. King Wise and Queen V reign supreme tonight, along with the MV3. Let's give it up for tonight's winners. Staying in the upper bracket, it's Blacklist International. Give us a good game. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're on upper brackets, it's a best five. It's not a sprint, it is a marathon. Best be sure, more games for both of these two teams. There is a saying, if you're gonna go for the king, make sure you strike to kill. But for now, on behalf of Jay and Arashi, at your service, as always, my name is Leo. We're throwing it over to our analysts to break down game five. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think you can get a closer game if you tried, welcome to Nanistan with me, LaPel, Naisu, and Trex, where I gotta say, target prioritization is so important, where RRQ Hoshi started the game pretty strong within getting good pickoffs, but then failing to actually take down Wise, kind of give the momentum over to Blacklist. The moment that Vin catches Haji, it almost looks like an RRQ game. I'm, I, I'm speechless at this point, right? Because that was a nail biter. I mean, everybody was sitting in the edges of their seats for their, for that last moment when you think there's the, the pure Albert, I'm, dude. I can't even, I can't even speak. But still, 
It was an amazing performance, but like you mentioned, Vin struggled trying to find the right targets for it a lot of times. And I feel like this is just one of those things about a Barrett's pick, right? You're huge. And it's hard to get past that. And that's kind of what we saw this time with that Kaja pick. Yeah, definitely around the mid game, the kill presence of that Kaja just started to wear off. Even towards that final exchange, when he finds on to Haji, and when a Truncheon comes in, he's not able to get the finish. And even then, it ends up being an even three for three trade. So losing that, losing that presence of the Kaja definitely tilted the battle towards the side of Blacklist. Yeah, we're gonna look at itemization as well as the hero picks because it's very important for us to talk about this because we gotta talk about the Barats where he's really showing a very big presence in the front line because in a previous match, Finn easily could catch Oh My Venus. But this time, Wise is just a huge wall, not giving vision for Vin, not giving him an opportunity to catch anyone else but him. Yeah, like I said, you know, that Barris locked in here, it's a huge wall to get over, and that's what we saw. And also, when you have the Yuzhong, you have this Kadita pick for RQ. You're very, you're kind of going all in on that pickoff potential, and as the game transitioned on, you're not able to get those picks. A lot of that firepower, a lot of that kind of cards up your sleeve, they, they're, they're expended, and once that happens, that's where we saw the punish from Blacklist International. And another thing to point out as well about the 11, 12 minute mark, he picks up that blade armor, and this forces Skylar to not, you know, to maybe rely on the Renner a bit more, not get too heavily involved, and has to pick and choose where he's going in these team fights. Because if he shoots into Wise in an extended team fight, it does not work out well for him. Let's look at the numbers. Rich guy as well as so Perry is from RQ with Albert, 751 gold per minute, almost 100,000 damage coming in from Skylar. But the numbers don't lie. Wise took 184,000 damage. It almost looks like Wise has a magnet embedded in him where everyone from RRK Hoshi is chasing after him. And then there's nothing that they could really do to take down, take down the Barats. Yeah, it definitely wasn't easy. And towards the beginning, it felt like RQ you know, they, they had that game in the back, even towards the end. I mean, it was just so back and forth, but Blacklist falls back onto that sustainability with the Barats, just such a clutch pick. And I mean, they end up winning now. I, again, I think we're all speechless after that best of five. Again, I think it's just that combination between that Barrett's pick and again, the Estes pick. I mean, how many times are we gonna see the Estes pop up here when it's Blacklist International? And the game MVP, none other than Oheb. Yeah, we didn't talk about him much, but 3-0 in 6 match, 82% kill participation because it's one thing to absorb all the damage, but it's also another thing for you to actually dish all of it out in this game, Oheb. Because again, this is a big composition, and Oheb was not seen by Arkyoshi in the game until he decides, I'm gonna kill you guys. Another important thing to point out, the two purifies on the side of Blacklist. Now, in the previous game, RQ was really able to chain those attacks. Vin would go in, then R7 would back up, but this time, you have some disruption. The, the petrifies don't work from the Kadita as well. The petrifies don't work from R7 as well, and this gives them a little bit of an advantage in some of those skirmishes. Looking at the heat map right now, from five minutes all over to the 10 minutes, you can see Oheb, he <laughs> is a gold leader, but he's moving around. And this is just the Ube strat where whenever they want to secure the nature of objectives, being the turtle, being the, the, the turrets, he makes sure that he is with Wise as well as Venus. So when uh, Wise gets targeted, he can back him up. Yeah, again, he, you know, we saw that Corrosion Scythe once again, still kind of pretty much solving the same issue here. You lock in that Claude, you're available when you need to be, but mostly if you're slowing down the enemy team here, and for RRQ's case, it's really hard to get away from that. And then again, just, the, just how everything unfolded, it was in favor of Blacklist International at a one part in the game. Very interesting to see that Claude not only is a great damage dealer, but now as a utility gold laner as well. And in this team fight, the moment Blacklist International was able to actually dominate the map, dominate where they want to go, our Kiyoshi, they don't have any avenues to get into the fight. And we can see how difficult it is. Oheb jumps in and he's not punished. I mean, but the speed almost gives it to RRQ, right? They, they play that long fight so well, the back and forth, back and forth. 
but we saw it around that nine minute mark. That's when it started to shift, and from here on, this is the huge fight where that winner Trunchion came in. This was such the game changer for our clutch for Haji. I mean, and it ends up being a three for three trade. I mean, RQ has a super advantage here, and somehow Blacklist find three of them. At that moment, Edward had the Winter Truncheon still activated, so Albert couldn't actually deal the basic attack. That 0.5, 0.3 seconds difference, if Edward wasn't on target,